And my name's uh, John Martin. I'm a consultant gastroenterologist uh, working on the NHS at Imperial College Healthcare. Um, and also I work privately at uh, One Welbeck and also at the Cromwell Hospital. Um, I have a general ex uh, interest in all aspects of gastroenterology, but particularly an interest in lower um, disorders of the lower GI tract, um, and particularly colon cancer screening, um, and have an uh, interest in colonoscopy, both diagnostic and therapeutic colonoscopy. So the cause of ulcerative colitis is not entirely known, um, but there are certain factors that we do know are important. Um, the, probably the most uh, accepted theory is a, a abnormal immune response to bacteria which are in the colon. So we all have a, a, a millions and billions of bacteria living in our colon, which normally just sit there without causing any problems. Um, but in ulcerative colitis, the theory is that the immune system uh, has a mounts a response to these bacteria, which then subsequently attack um, our own colon, causing inflammation. Um, there are also genetic factors. So certainly patients with ulcerative colitis often have a family history. And if you have family members, your risk is, is higher um, than the general population. Um, there are factors about race. So certainly it's much more common to have ulcerative colitis in the Western world, so, so in Europe and America, and certainly um, people that emigrate from other parts of the world, such as Asia, um, are often have a higher incidence of ulcerative colitis once they arrive in the Western world than they did um, back home. So really, the, there isn't a huge amount that needs to be done to be honest, um, the aim of medical therapy is to uh, obtain remission, so to gain a normal uh, bowel habit and, and, and heal all the inflammation. And once that's done, um, there really isn't very much that um, patients need to do uh, in, in, in order of monitoring their lifestyle. Um, some patients who have strictures in the bowel maybe reduce their fibre intake, and there is some suggestion that it might be a good idea to, to avoid um, of refined foods and um, certain sugars, but generally uh, people with ulcerative colitis can live a normal life. It is a chronic condition, ulcerative colitis, um, and it is very variable. Some patients will have um, an attack and then have a very easy course um, with very little problems, and other patients will have um, more problems. Um, there are certain, and it's, it's quite difficult to know exactly how the people are going to behave, but there are certain factors which do um, predict a, a bad outcome. So um, patients who have an early onset of their disease often have more trouble in the future compared to patients who develop the disease later in life. Um, the extent of the disease is important. So people with um, more extensive disease will, will have a more difficult course um, and also the response to treatment so um, patients who either respond very slowly to medical therapy um, or who relapse and get disease back again very quickly after after their first treatment um, will, will also uh, often have a more difficult um, course with their disease um, some patients develop ulcerative colitis after stopping smoking, and in those cases, um, it's often a little bit more difficult to treat, although we would not recommend restarting um, cigarette smoking. Overall, um, patients with um, ulcerative colitis have very close to a normal life expectancy. This is slightly worse than patients without the disease, um, but only slightly, and this is often due to very severe disease or sometimes the development of complications. So really, it's a matter of looking out for the early signs of the disease. So the, the classical symptoms of ulcerative colitis will be diarrhea um, with blood in the stool, often with patients having to rush um, to the toilet um, when they feel the need to go. Sometimes patients will get abdominal pain, often just prior to going through the toilet. Um, so I think it's really just a matter of trying to monitor, looking out for those symptoms um, and, and identifying them early so that 
um, medication could be altered early on in the disease before it becomes too established. So there are um, a variety of treatments. Um, so the most uh, the basic treatment are treatments based on a drug called mesalazine, which is an anti-inflammatory, um, and that can be taken um, orally or in the form of enemas or suppositories, depending on where the location of the disease is. And often patients will respond to that um, alone. Um, if that is unsuccessful, the next step probably um, would be a course of steroids, um, which often settles the disease. And that may be enough um, if the repeated courses of steroids appear to be required, then there are other drugs which are used to um, suppress the immune system, such as azathioprine, and that can be used long term to um, suppress the immune system, which is the problem, um, as we discussed earlier, with, with ulcerative colitis. The, there are a variety, however, of patients who may not respond to this, these therapies, and then there are a variety of newer medicines which have come in over the last 10 to 15 years, um, um, and of which there are becoming more and more. And these are biological therapies, um, which are targeted to more specific um, um, parts of the immune system. Um, which are, you know, to try and dampen down the immune response. And these can be given in a variety of ways, either intravenous infusions, um, often by subcutaneous injections. And there are some now oral medications which are acting this way. And the number of these medications is growing rapidly and, and are very effective in terms of controlling the disease. If medical therapy fails, um, then ultimately um, there is an, the option to for surgery, which would mean removing the colon. Um, and that obviously will cure the disease because ulcerative colitis affects only the colon. Um, and then there are two options really in terms of how the patient is managed there, thereafter. They have what, uh, a stoma, so an ileostomy. Um, or some patients can have what's called a pouch, which is a reconstruction of a, a rectum um, with using small bowel. Um, which obviously maintains patient's anatomy, but, but with, the, with that, they will still have um, frequency of, of going to the toilet maybe six or seven times a day. So there are a variety of um, other problems that can be associated with ulcerative colitis, some uh, of which are related to disease activity and some of which are not. Uh, the most common one is uh, joint pain. So a lot of patients with ulcerative colitis will also have problems in their joints. Um, you can get inflammation in the eyes. Um, you can get um, problems with um, the skin. There's a, a rash which you can appear on the bottom of your legs and which can occur with ulcerative colitis and also liver problems. So some patients with ulcerative colitis have associated liver disease, um, which can be progressive and, and sometimes in some cases quite severe. Um, in terms of the colon itself, um, complications can occur in severe attacks of ulcerative colitis. So in patients who are very ill with an acute attack, um, they can have bleeding, um, they, the, the colon can um, dilate up um, and sometimes can perforate. And these, these um, complications can require immediate surgery. Um, long term, um, there is a increased risk in patients with ulcerative colitis in, in terms of developing changes related to cancer and ultimately developing colon cancer. Um, and this is particularly a problem in patients who have um, more extensive disease and have had the disease for a long time um, or also have to be disease that is difficult to control. Um, and as a result of that, patients with ulcerative colitis will have regular colonos colonoscopies um, to have their colon examined and often biopsied to try and identify early changes to avoid um, cancer developing. <laughs>